Recognize our voices, acknowledge our pain, see our hurt, and don't leave us in the budget planning. Students of color in Denver want better representation in their school's budget. Aurora police are answering questions about their response to a protest this weekend over the death of Elijah McClain. Window is closing. We have to act and people as individuals have to act responsibly. As the number of new COVID-19 cases surges in more than 30 states, officials are blaming young people for the spikes. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Corey here with Gary and Natasha. Becky's going to join us in a second. Marty's joining us. We're reunited, and it feels so good <laughs> yes. this Monday morning. The band is back. <laughs> the band is back. I love it. I love that. <laughs> you sent me that meme this morning. So true. Yes, yeah, so yeah. good. <laughs> All right, let's do check the weather forecast. It's going to be another hot one in Denver today. It is, and this morning is a little misleading, Gary, because it's kind of cloudy out there right now, but that doesn't mean it's going to be cool. The clouds are going to go away, and the heat is going to turn up. Now, we may, here in the next just few minutes, I'd say in the next 15 minutes or so, we might be able to get some pretty cool-looking color if we can get the sun to shine up, you know, just come up under the from under the horizon and catch the lower side of those clouds. We'll watch for that here in the next little bit. It's going to be hot this afternoon. By the way, the record high is 102. We're not going to get close to that. It is dry across the state and dry here. Dew points now are in the low 40s. That's borderline on the dry side. Almost dries your skin out too much when it is this dry. Definitely dry across Colorado with extreme fire danger on the plains, south of Monty Hill, and in our western valley south of the Colorado River. Thank you, Marty. Taking a live look at our drive, you can see that sunrise that Marty was just talking about. This is I-25 at 23rd. No major issues out there. That drive down from E-470 to I-70 along I-25 southbound only takes nine minutes. Speeds above the speed limit, averaging 72 miles per hour. No accidents metro-wide. I'm not seeing any huge slowdowns either. 270, both directions running about six minutes between I-70 and I-25. Those speeds in the middle 60s and I-70 east and westbound an eight to nine minute drive between I-25 and 225. All right, thanks, Becky. The Denver Public School Board is going to vote today on a budget for the upcoming school year. John Glasgow live at district headquarters this morning. John, a group of advocates wants to make sure that that budget addresses student inequities. That's right, Gary. It's a coalition and they're pushing to make sure that the needs of students of color are addressed when Denver Public Schools returns this fall. Now this comes as there's a major shortfall in funding in the upcoming school year due to COVID-19. So the coalition is calling on the Board of Education to create a budget that prioritizes students of color, students with special needs and those who come from low income households. They don't want the board to adopt a budget that would overlook student inequalities. Things like mental health access, distance learning access, and the representation of student body through teachers and staff. Students who feel that they have inexper experienced these in injustices were among those who spoke. These couple of months, even days, are uncertain. As the, and as the board who's supposed to serve each individual in Denver Public Schools, you cannot also disregard our needs. Recognize our voices, acknowledge our pain, see our hurt, and don't leave us from the budget planning. So the district is facing a $65 million shortfall due to COVID-19. The district is considering options to save money through public comments. Some of those include the CARES Act money. They're also looking at things where they could make cuts at the district central office here behind me or potentially even payroll. So Gary, there's a lot to consider when the board makes this vote on the upcoming school year later today. Yeah, lots of challenges ahead for that school board, that's for sure. Thanks, John. Denver Public Schools plans to have all students able to attend school in person full time this fall. The district laid out the health precautions, including screenings for students and staff when they arrive each morning and required masks. Students will also eat breakfast and lunch in their classrooms. and There will be no assemblies or large gatherings. Most uh, schools plan to return on August 17th. Aurora police are answering questions about their use of force on people protesting the death of Elijah McLean. Saturday's protest started peacefully. That evening, police say the demonstration turned unlawful when some people armed themselves with rocks and sticks, threw things at police, and refused an order to move. Aurora police used pepper spray and spoke, not tear gas, to disperse the crowds. 
I've got three things to know right now about COVID-19. First, the world now has more than 10 million cases. More than 500,000 people have died worldwide, mostly in the U.S., Brazil, the U.K., and Italy. However, nearly half the people diagnosed with COVID-19 have already recovered. The U.S. accounts for about 25 percent of the total number of cases in the world. Right now, at least 30 states are dealing with a surge in cases, and more than a dozen states have reversed parts of their plans to reopen. While Colorado isn't seeing the same surge, we are seeing more cases. Between Saturday and Sunday, 285 more people in our state tested positive for the virus. That makes more than 32,000 cases since the pandemic began. Nearly 1,500 Coloradans have died due to the virus. Around the country, officials are looking for a reason behind the increases. As Stephanie Whitfield shows us, evidence shows young people may be to blame. As coronavirus cases surge in parts of the U.S., some officials are blaming young people. And there are some troubling trends when it comes to COVID-19 and Generation Z. Let's connect the dots. In states across the country seeing a spike in coronavirus, governors are pleading with young people to wear masks and practice social distancing. And there are numbers to back up their concern. According to authorities in Texas, more than half of the new cases in hotspots like Houston, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio are among people 35 and under. While the CDC reports that younger people are more likely to be asymptomatic or have mild symptoms, that doesn't mean they're in the clear. We're also seeing a spike in hospitalizations for people ages 18 to 49. Austin's medical director reports an increasing number of those young people are ending up in the ICU and on ventilators. And while young people are less likely to die from this virus, we're starting to learn more about the long-term effects of COVID-19. Global researchers are reporting patients who recover, suffering from everything from permanent lung scarring to heart damage to neurological symptoms. So while young people may feel invincible, Coronavirus is teaching all of us some harsh lessons.